Hi my friends, welcome back to my live stream. Uh, this is um, Cuckoo Chef Francis live on YouTube. So um, today I'll be making fish pie. Um, now we got uh, the normal fish pie, you know, like in the Western world, they eat fish pie. So what we use this one and uh, go use that for fish pie. But you know, the um, Caribbean and the African style, you make a pastry like um, and you put the fillings right in there you know but in Europe and America you you put the fillings in the bowl and you top with your pastry but it's quite different uh, in Caribbean and Africa what they do you, you got the pastry and you roll out the pastry and when you roll it out you put the fillings right in there so it's same thing, same feelings, but different style of wrapping the pastry. So in the Caribbean and Africans, you got you use your hands to eat the pastry. You know what I mean? Like you use your hands to eat it. But in in Europe and in America, uh, you use your fork to eat your pie. So uh, <laughs> that's not the difference. I'll be right back, my friends. Thank you very much. All my friends, uh, let's get started now. So as I said before, uh, today I'll be making fish pie. So I said I'll be making the Nigerian fish pie, just like the Caribbean one. What we do, we make a pastry, we like a pastry and we put the fillings right in there. But if you're making um, the European or American fish pie, what you need to do, you use that, you use the bowl and you put your fillings right in there and cover up with the pastry. So you use the fork to eat that, but um, the Caribbean, African one, you roll out the pastry and you put the fillings right in there. You roll it and you like use your hands to eat it. So let's get started now. So I'll be using my recipe. I'll be making my fish pie dough. You know, just like the Nigerian meat pie, we we need to do what we need to make our fillings and we make our dough. 
So if you are making a uh, fish pie, chicken pie, or beef pie, we use the same fillings. Uh, we use the same pastry, but a little bit of difference in the fillings. So if you use a fish pie, you use fish as part of the fillings. If you use it, if you make a beef pie, you use beef as part of the fillings. If you make a pork pie, you use pork as part of the fillings. If you're making chicken pie, you use chicken as the fillings. But we got same vegetable, same process of making it. So right now I'm gonna show you guys how I'll be making my fish pie, the Nigerian and Caribbean style. Same thing. Now I need my basic recipe, my basic ingredient to make this wonderful fish pie. So what are the basic ingredients? What ingredient do we need? It's a standard recipe. If you miss it, you're gonna ruin it up. You're gonna ruin your pastry. We need a good quality pastry when we're making fish pie or meat pie or whatever, because if your pastry is not of good quality, we're not gonna get the result that we need. We need a very good result we want a pastry that is absolutely, you know, amazing. So now, uh, I'll be, you know, bringing out my recipe now. I'll, I'll, I'll get my ingredients and I'll set them aside. So now, I'm going to start with my dough. So I'll be making the fish pie dough now as i said earlier on we're using the same type of dough for fish pie for beef pie for chicken pie so uh i'm gonna introduce myself again this is my 14th live stream here on youtube so my name is francis and welcome to cook with chef francis live on youtube now i will get my ingredients and get started yeah. so i need for my dough i need baking powder i need baking powder to make my dough i'll be right back my friends thank you Yeah, my friends, I'm back. I went to put on my apron. You know, when you walk in the kitchen, you need an apron. You need a complete set of, you know, tools and uh, uniform. So I'm using the right uniform. So I got, I'm using my, uh, my hat, that's my chef hat, my chef jacket, my apron, and I got my, my trouser right there. So uh, now, you know, it's part of safety. <laughs> I need I need flour, so that's my baking powder for my meat pie dough, for for my fish pie bowl, my fish pie dough, a baking powder. So now for the fish pie dough, I need baking powder. I need flour, so I'm gonna get my flour now. Uh, I need flour. I need. You know you know uh, when you're making fish pie, you need different types of. You can use any type of fish you like, but I'll be using uh, the sea bass. You can use a macro, any one you like. Uh... 
for the fillings, we'll be using bell pepper for the fillings. So I'll pop, set that aside. We need carrot as well. We need some carrot for the fillings. That should be enough. So I'll uh, I said I need carrots for my fillings, I need bell peppers, I need flour for my dough. So this for the fillings, my, uh, my fish is in the fridge, so I'll leave that in the fridge for now. When I'm ready, I'll start uh, making that. So now, uh, I need flavor. I need flavor, so I'll set that aside. I need nutmeg for my fillings, so fillings. Uh, that's for the fillings and that's for the dough. And that's for the fillings. I need onion and garlic. Onion. I need garlic. I think I got some garlic. Yeah. Uh, I need like two, uh, three cloves of garlic. Of garlic. I'll put that away. I don't need that one now. That's enough. Three is enough. Three garlic is enough. Three garlic cloves. Yeah. Now, that's uh, my ground turmeric, my uh, ground black pepper, onion. Uh. So basically, for the fillings, for the uh, fish pie fillings, I'll be using uh, uh, turmeric, I'll be using ground turmeric, uh, uh, black pepper, I'm, 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 I'll be spicing my uh, my fish with black pepper, ground turmeric, onion, uh, garlic cloves. Then I'll be making my fillings. I'm gonna finely dice my carrot with my chef knife, and I'll be using the green bell pepper. You know, I have here with me the yellow, the green, and the red. But I prefer the red one. I prefer the green one for making fish pie. So I'll be using the green one to make my fish pie. So I'll be dicing that. I'll be dicing that quickly with my chef knife. I'll do that finely chop, and I'll dice that finely chop, and uh, that one as well finely chop. Then I'll be spicing that with my fish. I'll be using the sea bass for my fish for my fish pie. I'll be using sea bass, and uh, that's my flour. And I need unsalted butter to make, I, you know, you're making meat pie or fish pie. You need good quality butter for your pastry. So I'll grab that from my fridge. I need good quality unsalted butter. So I'm using the British unsalted butter. So I'll get that now. So 
So I'm using the sea bass fillet. You know, you need a boneless fish. You don't, you don't, you don't want to use fish with so many bones because if you do that, you're gonna ruin it. So you're gonna ruin your your fish pie. If someone is eating fish pie, and you're like you're eating bones everywhere. It doesn't make sense. Either. I would like eat fish pie and I'm eating bones. We don't need that. Either. I want fish pie with you know a fillet, fillet, filleted fish without bones. So I'm using the sea bass. I know sea bass is a good quality fish. We, we, we you can use any type of um, fish. We can use uh, macro. Macro is also a very good quality fish. You can use your fish pie. You can use haddock. You know, white fish. They're very nice. You know. So uh, that's for my fish. I'll set it aside now. What I'm going to be doing? I'm using filleted um, sea bass. Two sea bass fillet. Now, um, I'm gonna wash the fish. After washing that, I will dry it and I'll dry with my J-cloth. After dry with my J-cloth. So, you know, when you wash fish, you need to dry with your J-cloth. You know, so now I'll use that to dry the fish after washing. And I will spice it with my with olive oil, salt, and black pepper. I love using sea salt, so I'm using sea salt to spice my fillet. And you could use turmeric as well. And I'm gonna add some ginger puree. And, uh, I beg your pardon, some garlic puree. I have ground ginger, so I'm gonna add ground ginger. So let me get my ground ginger. Ground ginger. So I got I got some ground ginger here. So let's get started my friends. I'm gonna wash my sea bars now. I'm gonna wash that now. So uh, just gonna open that. So I'll quickly wash that in the sink and I'm gonna dry that with my J cloth. So my friends stay put while we make our lovely fish pie. It's beautiful when you make a fish pie. I love it. So now I'm done washing one of the fish. So that's my lovely fish fillet, sea bass. So I'll dry that one with my J cloth. Now, I need a tray for grilling um, or roasting like that. I can use that one, that's fine. So I need a baking paper. So I'll be using the baking paper to uh, that's my baking paper. So I'm gonna be using that's a new one. I'm gonna take off the uh, the tip for me. So um, now I'm gonna. I'll put that one there. That's all right. And uh, next, yeah, put that one, put that one away. Next, uh, I'll pop my dry fish straight on the. Um, can you see nice and dry? Uh, skin down when you when you, when you frying or or roasting fish you need to put the skin down not that one skin down so I place the skin down now bring that one off it's too big
Yeah, skin down. Now I'm gonna wash the other one. It's two fillets. So that's two fillets sea bag. You can use sea brim if you want to. You can use macro, but I'm using sea bars. You can use your white fish or you can use your oily fish, any one you like. So I'll dry that with my J cloth. So skin down. Can you see? Now I'm gonna take some salt, like a pinch, and I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt all over the uh, fish yeah I'm trying to trim the patent paper, the baking paper it's too big isn't it yeah I want it to fit in the tray yeah that's it my friends lovely fish lovely filleted fish now next what am i going to do i'm gonna sprinkle some black pepper on my lovely sea bass yeah lovely black pepper a little bit of olive oil can you see my friends a little bit of olive oil now I'll flip the skin. I want the uh, spices to go all over the uh, the fish, so I'll flip that. I'll flip that. Now, next, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of olive oil again. Can you see that, my friends? Yeah, that's nice. Uh, now. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, ground turmeric. You can use you could use your ground your ground curry if you want to, but I'm using turmeric. That's lovely, isn't it? Lovely. Ground ginger. Now I'm gonna flip it over again because I want the skin down. Skin down. Can you see that my friend skin down? Now I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of uh, ground turmeric again. Set it aside. Now I'll set this aside. I need one garlic puree. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set up my uh, chopping board. Just a second, my friend, please. Thank you. So, my friends, uh, this is my chopping board. Now, I'm going to grab my chef knife. Or cook's knife. Uh, I'll use my steel to, because you, as a chef, our knife needs to be very sharp. So I'm going to quickly do that. That should be enough. Sharp enough. I'll set that aside. Now, I'm going to clean my knife. I'm going to clean my knife. Then, uh, my garlic, 
I want to make some garlic puree because I need some or I need a rubbish, a rubbish bowl. I want to grab a rubbish bowl. Got my bean bowl. So I'll take off the uh, the garlic skin. Just want some garlic puree. That's it, my friends. I'm gonna show you how to make a garlic puree with uh, on the chopping board. It's easy. So I got uh, my garlic. Now, uh, now I'm gonna chop that. So now I'm gonna, I could just uh, chop it finely again. Sprinkle a little bit of salt. You put my board right at my edges. So I'm making my puree. So you see, it's almost like a puree now. I'll just do that for a couple of uh, seconds. That's my garlic puree. I'm making my garlic puree. Almost ready. Yeah. Ready now. So my garlic puree is ready now. So I'm gonna, you know, sprinkle a little bit of garlic puree right uh, right on my uh, in my um, bowl you see how lovely the puree is it's nice and smooth nice and smooth puree can you see that my friends so i'll pop a little now straight on my fish my sea bass so a little bit of uh... can you see that my friends i want the garlic to go into my sea bass look at that nice and lovely isn't it so I'll not put it straight into the fish. It's gonna give it, it's gonna add flavor and nutrient to the fish. It's gonna add a flavor and give it a nice aroma. So you see the fish nice and lovely. So now I got my fish with ground turmeric, um, garlic puree, um, black pepper, uh, ground ginger, now with olive oil sprinkled on both sides. And my fish is skinned down my two flated fish are skinned down so when you roasting or frying a filleted fish you need to put skin down so that that's the basic technique in culinary because if you put the skin the other way around you're gonna ruin it so i'm using the parchment paper a baking paper and i'm placing my fish skin down on the parchment paper you could just oil your tray if if you want to if you don't have a parchment paper or a baking paper you can oil your tray and place your fish skin down now i will be putting this straight into my oven now 
I got my oven right here, so I'm gonna uh, preheat my oven and put it under the grill. You can put yours under the salamander or a grill, it's up to you, or you can just put it straight in the oven. So now I'll be putting that in the oven. My oven have a grill, so I'll be using that. Now, I'll put that at 200 degrees Celsius. So, uh, that's all right. So I'll put that, set that aside. Now my friends, uh, I'm gonna put my fish straight into the oven and we proceed to make our fillings. When I start making my fillings, I'm moving the camera straight close to the hub so you can see what I'm doing because the camera is a little bit far from the hub now. So, but now I'm putting that in my oven, but I'll be using the grill side to grill my fish. So when my fish is ready, I'll add it into my fillings. Straight into the oven, my friends. Uh, that's the um, grill side. So at 200, now I'll be um, grilling the fish for at least uh, 15 minutes that's the rubbish now uh, I'm gonna put this I need a plate so that's my plate that's my uh, plate so I'm gonna put my garlic puree you see nice garlic puree so I'll be placing that on my plate lovely garlic puree so that's my garlic puree So I'm, I'm gonna wash my knife again. So wash my knife. Now I'm gonna you know, wash the green bell pepper. So I'll put this back in the fridge. I don't need this one, straight in the fridge. So my friends, I'm, I'm gonna wash my uh, green pepper now. Now, I'm gonna, you know, I don't wanna use too many, so that one should be enough. I'll keep this back in the fridge. I don't need this, so I'll put it back in the fridge. So I'm using just uh, half bell pepper so I'm gonna you know clean that off I'll take out the seeds I don't need the seed from the bell pepper there's no seed in there now Finally chop. I'm gonna finally chop my uh,
So that's finally chopped. So I'm gonna place that on the uh, like a handful. That's like a handful of green bell pepper. That's all right. That's a, ha a handful of meat. So I'm done with that one now. So uh, next, I think I need to do that one as well. So that's a uh, finely chopped uh, green bell pepper, finely chopped. So hope you can see that. Finally chop. Now I'm done with my green bell pepper. Next, uh, I need. Uh, I have my green bell pepper. I need. I got. Uh, I got my garlic. My garlic puree. So I need onion. Uh, let me get my paring knife. Uh, so, um, so I'm gonna peel that now. I'm gonna wash that. I'm gonna finally chop the onion. Finally chop. That's my onion, finely chopped. So, uh, So my onion is ready. I pop that one in, finely chopped onion. I'll set that aside. I will check my fish and see what's going on now. See if my fish is ready. Yeah, my fish is almost ready, so... Yeah, let's give it five minutes more, the fish will be ready. So while that is um, roasting away, uh, I'm gonna peel my carrot. 
have peeler. Uh, I'm gonna quickly peel my carrots quickly. So I'm gonna wash my carrots. So uh, now. I'm gonna make a fine, I'm gonna make julienne. After making julienne, I'm gonna dice my carrots. I'll be right back, my friends. Thank you. Hello my friends, I'm back. The fish is ready, so I'll turn my oven off. Because I'm still gonna make my sauce, so I don't need to overcook my fish. Now, uh, I'll be making my julienne. My julienne. So, uh, we just... Uh, Finally, finally dice that one. I'll set that aside. I don't need too much carrot, I just need a little bit of carrot. So yeah, finally chop. Bring those ones together. Yeah, that's nice. I'll bring the Julian together, make a fine dice. That's the fine dice. That's the fine dice.
Fine dice. Yeah. I'm making a julian. You know, like a thin strips, and uh, you bring them together and make a fine dice. Julian falls before the dice. So uh, that should be enough. So I'm gonna bring them together and make a fine dice. Now I got I got my fine dice. Now I'm gonna pop that straight into my plate. That's lovely, isn't it? Lovely veg. So I'm still gonna leave my bowl because I still need this for my um potatoes my new potatoes now that's my new potatoes now uh, i'm gonna clean my wok top Now, I'm going to grab my new potatoes. I don't need too much, so I'm going to uh, take off the skin. I'll peel the skin. I just need one medium size. Now I'm gonna wash my potatoes. I'm gonna finally dice my potatoes. So my fish is ready, I'm going to bring out my fish from the oven. So, you can see how lovely my fish is. Nice and golden. Can you see that lovely filleted fish sea bass? So I'll set that aside, allow that to cool. So I'll be putting that in my fillings. Lovely fish.
Now, I'm gonna keep uh, dicing my uh, potatoes. So I got my uh, But before that, you know, I'll be making my dough, so I need some cold water. So I'm gonna pop uh, a glass of a, 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 about uh, just a little bit of water in a glass, and I put it in the fridge to get a cold water because you need the cold water for your pastry. You cannot use warm water or normal water; it's not gonna bind. So I just need a little bit of water. So I'm gonna pop. Just like, uh, I just need a little bit of water, like almost a glass cup, but not to a glass cup. So I'll pop that in my freezer to chill. So I'll be using that for my fish pie dough. So I'll pop that in the freezer now to get chilled before we mix our dough. Thank you very much. So while the water is in the fridge, I'll be chopping my uh, potatoes. You know, you need to work with your thigh when you're making meat pie or fish pie. So I'm going to make fine dice. So I'll be putting that in a separate bowl. Because I'll be parboiling that in a second. In a couple of minutes, I'll be doing that. I'll parboil, parboil, I'll pick up and I'll parboil that one in a couple of minutes. Now, uh, I'll keep chopping my veggies my potatoes yeah So I pop that one in. That's it, my friends. Now I'll finish up with that one. So I'll pop that in. So we got the finely chopped, um, finely diced new potatoes straight into my bowl. Now I don't need my chopping board anymore. I'll put that away. I'll put my chopping board away. I don't need that anymore. Straight for pot wash. Now, I'm going to quickly put my uh, new potatoes straight into uh, a pot and I'm going to allow that to cook away for just to parboil that. I'm going to 
I'm gonna power boy this for at least um, let's give it for let's give it like five minutes or about two three minutes five minutes so I'm gonna power boy that so I'll be using my saucepan a little bit of water straight in there can you see that so I'll power boy that with a saucepan So now I'm gonna turn my uh, hob on and you know parboil that on the hob. So my friends, I got my fish already roasted. I show you, I showed my friends, my viewers, how I did that from the very beginning. So that's it, my friends. So I'm raising that for my feelings. Lovely sea bass, well grilled. Now, uh, why are we waiting for our parboy potatoes and our uh, water to chill in the fridge? What I'm gonna be doing now, I'm gonna explain myself again, uh, like a recap what I did. Today we're making fish pie. So as I said earlier on, if you're making fish pie right here in the UK or maybe in the other part of European countries or in the US, Canada or you know in the Americas or whatever, they use a fish bowl and they put the fillings into the bowl and make a pastry and seal it up. You know, they put the pastry on top and they enjoy that with a fork. But in Africa and the Caribbeans, what they do, they make a pastry and roll the pastry out flat, then put the fillings right into the pastry, uh, uh, right on the, the, uh, the pastry, and they, roll, and they cover it up and seal the edges. So I'm going to be showing you the techniques. So um, the Caribbeans and the, the Africans, when you go to Jamaica or Nigeria, you see, we do it that way, we, we eat with the hand. You take a pie and you eat with the hand. Just like your pork pie, you know how they make pork pie in, in the Western world or in Asia or whatever, or in, 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 in the US, you know, or the UK, you know, where they make pork pie, is like a round shape, like a scone shape, but the, the pork is into that pastry, so it's similar. But in this case, the fish pie will be making it like a pie shape, you know. So that one, that's what I'm going to be doing today. It's a lovely pie, and it's going to be absolutely, you know, sweet and amazing to to, to have this pie. Now, uh. I'm going to be making my fillings now and my dough. So I'll make my fillings and allow my fillings to cool. Then I'll proceed in making my dough. Or I could make I, I could make my dough and chill in the fridge. It's up to me. I could do anyone. Doesn't really matter. But now for my fillings, these are the fillings. I already make my prep from the beginning. You know, when you're cooking as a chef, you need to make a prep list and you need to prep your work. You know, I've I have my waste bowl, my bean bowl. I got my oil. But now, what I what did I did first? I actually took my veggies. Can you see that, my friends? That's the carrot. I finally chopped the carrots. I peeled my carrot, washed the part carrot. You know, finally diced the carrot, and I did same to my green bell pepper. I washed the green bell pepper finely dies and that's my onion I wash my onion and I finally dice my onion I think my potatoes are ready so it's cooking away, it's boiling away so I'll switch the hob off you know I'll switch that off and uh, so we just need to parboil the potatoes so it's Parboil it, I've sweet the hop off, so the remaining heat we cook it, cook it, nice and hot, so 
you know, so it's still hot. Now, I have finely chopped carrot, finely diced onions, and finely diced green pepper. These are the basic uh, vegetables you need for your fish pie. Lovely vegetable, finely diced. Finely diced green pepper, finely diced onion, and finely diced carrot. I got my finely diced potatoes. So it's not boiling. I will strain that with a colander when it's ready, and I'll put that here. So I'm ready with my sauce. Now, I'll, I'm, I'm going to sweat my onion and garlic puree. You know, I got garlic puree right here. So I'm going to sweat it in olive oil uh, to make my fillings. So I could sweat it with butter if I like, but I'll be sweating my uh, onion with olive oil and garlic. Then I'll put my vegetable after sweating the onion in olive oil. And I'll be spicing it with salt and pepper, black pepper. So my uh, uh, potato is ready. I'll drain it with a colander and pop it here because I'm waiting that for my feelings. Now, uh, add my colander and I'll drain it now. Yeah. That's alright my friends, so now So I got my um, my diced parboy new potatoes, so I'm gonna put that straight into the mixture You know I'll be sweating my onion, so I have to put my onion, I'll put it aside, I need to sweat it with the garlic So I'll put that there So I'm going to take my onion out, I need to sweat my onion, so let me pop it on this side. So. Now, that's for the dough, I'll set that one aside. I don't need that for now. Now I need that's my waist bean. I don't need my pillar. I'll put that away. Now I got my fish. So I'll be um uh, you know my fish got some oil here. I'm gonna still use that oil. So I got my filleted fish. I'm gonna take off the skin. I don't need the skin, so I'll remove the skin from the fillet. Skin off. Skin off. Now I'm gonna, you know, break them into pieces. So what I'll be doing? I'm gonna grab another bowl. Let me just quickly wash my hands. Yeah. I could just pop that one here. No worries. My onion can stay here. Yeah. My onion can stay here. Now, uh, Lovely sea bass, I'm gonna try it. Tastes absolutely nice. So, very sweet, nice fish. It's a white fish, so I'm gonna put that. 
into my fish bowl i see that no bones boneless fish you know well filleted so i'm gonna put that straight into the bowl it's nice skin off remember skin off skin off Pop that one there. Lovely fish pie, my friends. It's lovely fish, my friends. Now, I'm checking if I can get some ingredient in there. That's all right. So I'll put it for pot wash. Wash my hands. So you can see, I already made my ingredients and my fish, my veg and fish, already to go into the frying pan. Now, I'm going to clean my work surface, make that clean, and uh, put that away when I'm ready to use I'll bring them back uh, I need curry and uh, some ginger again just put that there and pepper and salt I need olive oil for frying so uh, I need fish in that one so I'll be Using the uh, hob now. So uh, I'll put my fish on the other corner and my vegetables. Yeah. Now, put that away. I'm moving my camera to that point. So uh, you can see if I don't move my camera, my friends, you're not gonna see it. So I have to move my camera so you can see. Can you see my friends? So my friends, you can now see the hole. So I'm, I'm gonna grab my tray. So I have to move my camera, you know what I mean? I'm like making a movie. So I need to bring my camera straight, close to the, uh, to the hole. So my friends can see. If I don't bring my camera close to the hole, my friend, you're not gonna see. So I want to make my feelings now. So right here, I'm gonna pop my, I'll on my hob, I'll turn it on, and I'm gonna grab my frying pan. So my friends, that's my frying pan. I'm gonna grab my olive oil. So I'm gonna pop my olive oil on my lovely frying pan. 
Just a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of olive oil. So allow that to um, allow that to heat up. Uh, when it heats up, I'm gonna, you know, fry my uh, my vegetables. While that is heating up, uh, I'll grab my wooden spoon. I need a little bit of flour. You know, you need a little bit of flour to bind it together. So uh, I need a tablespoon. I need a tablespoon. And I need a little bit of water as well. Uh, you know, like to make it, I'm gonna make like a flour paste. So my friends, you can see from here, I got, I got my um, frying pan heated up. I got olive oil in my frying pan. So uh, now, my friends, while you are waiting for the oil to heat up, I'm gonna start now. I need to sweat my onion right into this frying pan. I'm gonna sweat my onion right into this frying pan. So just watch how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be using a very nice technique, you know, you know, how to do it in culinary, you know, how to handle your frying pan and all that. So I'll be showing you the basic techniques. Firstly, you need to sweat your onion in that oil. You know, your, when you sweat your onion, it adds flavor. You could sweat the onion by having color if you want to, or without color. You can sweat without color, or you can sweat with color. When you sweat with color, the onion becomes caramelized, becomes like brown in color. But when you sweat without color, the onion does not caramelize. So I'm gonna be sweating with that color. I don't want to sweat with color. I'm sweating with that color because I want my onion still a little bit white not to brown. So I'll be sweating with that color right now. So my friends, I'll sweat my onion straight into this olive oil. Let's get started my friends. So now, that's my onion. So um, I don't want it too hot. So, because I want to show with that color. So, uh, yeah. Let's give it some time to heat up. I just put on the hob now. So the hob is still heating up. So as I said, I'll be explaining what I'm going to be doing now. So right now, uh, I'll be sweating my onion. So when I sweat my onion, uh, I'll put my garlic puree right in there. It's, it's heating up now. So I'll put my garlic puree right in there. And I'm going to be adding my chopped vegetables. You know, I dice my uh, bell pepper. I'm using green bell pepper. But the green pepper, the green bell pepper I'm using is just uh, a little bit, not, you know, for one bell pepper, like half, almost half bell pepper is what I'm using. So you don't put the seed, right? You don't need the seed in the bell pepper. So uh, I'm using like half green bell pepper seedless you need to take off the seed remove the seed from it finely dice and i'm using carrot like two medium sized carrot is all right i was using three small carrot a handful of finely diced carrot and a handful of uh finely diced green pepper it's all right and onion just a little bit of onion now i'm gonna sweat my onion. i'm sweating my onion now <laughs> So uh, now I'm going to pop my uh, my garlic puree and uh, my other vegetable right there. I got my garlic puree right there. And my, got my carrot. Everything, just put everything in there. Green pepper. Everything, my friends. So 
So I'm gonna mix that now. So it's almost it's almost ready. So now I'm gonna allow that to cook away, then I'll put my chicken now, my, my fish rather. So my friends, that's almost ready. It's almost ready, my friends. Now I'll put my fish right in there. You don't want to cook it too much. That's my fish. Give me a little stir. Now I got my fish almost ready. I'll let that to cook away. Now I'm gonna add some uh, uh, flour, just about one tablespoon of flour, a little bit of water. Because I want it to bind together. So it's going to come together, so I have to add flour. So you need that to cook for long. So that should be all right. I'm gonna add some uh, ground turmeric, a little bit of spice, I'll put that away, a little bit of salt, you don't want it too salty, a little bit of pepper, black pepper, a little bit of ginger. That's enough. Now I'm going to try that and see how nice it is. I'm going to turn my hog. That's 
That's what I... Where spice my friends? We leave that to to cook for some time. Very nice. So my friend is almost ready. Can you see? It's coming together. It's binding. Can you see that? It's binding together. You see? Binding together. Now I'm going to clean my hole. I'm gonna clean my mess. The uh, the fish pie sauce is ready. The fillings, the fillings is ready. So let me clean my mess. You know when you're flipping, sometimes the vegetables, you know, they go up from the uh, <laughs> from the frying pan while you're flipping. If you cannot flip, you can use your spoon instead of flipping. It takes you practice to flip. So now, I got a clean hob. Now my hob is clean. I will start making my fish by dough right away that's lovely my friends looks absolutely yummy i'm gonna try it nice tastes great now i'll take that off. i'll take that off i'll remove that from the pit i'll start my dough now so i'll take back my camera so you can see the work surface so i'll take my camera back now You know, I don't have a cameraman. I'm doing the cameraman. I'm doing the cooking. I'm doing the chef. I'm doing everything. <laughs> oh, my friends. Now, I'm going to take my camera back. Yeah, I'll take it back now. Gently. Yeah. Yeah, nice comment from uh, my wife. She says you can see the aroma, of course. The aroma from the pan. Now, thank you very much, my wife, for commenting. She left a nice chat. Aroma coming out from the uh, from the lovely frying pan. Now, uh, 
Yeah. Thank you, my friends, for staying put. Now, I think you can see the workshop is now. I moved my camera close to the... Uh, <laughs> I need to put it, put it back a little again. Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, that's all right. So, uh, my camera, I have to put it back so you can see you know the frying pan now is back on the work surface so i'll be working here on the work surface so you can see what i'm doing yeah that's all right my friends yeah no worries yeah so now my friends i'll be um um kneading I'll be mixing my dough right here so while this is cooling away I got my uh, feelings ready cooling away now we're going to the main one of course uh, your feelings are also very important and necessary to make because if you don't have a good feeling what's going to happen you're going to ruin your fish pie so it's step by step I got cold water in the um, freezer so I'm, go I'm gonna bring my cold water right here we need cold water not the one from the tap you need to put it in the fridge to chill it because if you don't do that your meat pie dough is not gonna bind together so as i said earlier we're using meat pie and fish pie to do the same thing so i'll get my chilled water now It was in the freezer, so it's already chilled. So we start now. I'll be right back, my friends. I'm back my friends now my friends I'll be telling you the recipes for the fish pie dough so let me just grab my recipes I'll go grab them from the fridge I need egg so I'll get my egg I need my scale. That's my scale, my friends. I need my scale. And of course, I need flour. I need a bowl. I need uh, a spatula of course I need to weigh my put that in the fridge So my friends, I'm going to weigh my flour. I need 250 grams of flour. So I need 250. So I'm going to weigh. Yeah, uh, I got another message from um, the Remy's recipe. It says yummy. You know, thanks for your comment, my friends. Now, 
Uh, that's my. Uh, I need to weigh my flour. Two fifty. I need. That's a lot. Yeah, that's two fifty. That's enough. So I'll set that aside. Lovely flour. Now, I got, I got my butter. I need to. I need. You know, the, the technique is your flour is 250, then your butter will be half your flour. If you're using 1000 grams of flour, it means, if my friends, if you're using uh, 500 grams of flour, then your unsalted butter is going to be what? 250. If you're using 1 kilogram or 1 kilo or 1000 grams of flour, your butter is going to be 500. So, Basically, I'm using 250 grams of flour, so it's half recipe. 250 grams of flour, so I'm going to pop 125 grams of unsalted butter. So let's get started, my friends. My butter, you know, like a short cross pastry. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Now, I'm going to pop my unsalted butter straight in here. But now, I'm going to set that aside for now. I'm quickly going to add just a pinch of salt. You can use the pinch of table salt. It's up to you, but I love sea salt. So, I'm going to pop a pinch of sea salt on in, in there. I need ground nutmeg. I need just one quarter tablespoon of nutmeg. Or you could just use a teaspoon. That's all right. Nutmeg straight in there. One quarter tablespoon of nutmeg or one teaspoon. That's all right. Next, I'm going to add my baking powder. One quarter tablespoon. This is one tablespoon. So I'm using... I'll be dividing this into four, so I need just a quarter. So I'm going to stir that. You could add, you know, uh, in, uh, in in Nigeria, they they add um, spices. You can add like like a stock, maybe uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe chicken stock or something or not chicken. You know, the cube one, the, the stock cubes. You know, you could just add it. Thank, thank you, um, the Rumi's uh, recipe for commenting, and thank you, my wife as well. So, I, I got your comment. So, I really appreciate your comment, my friend. So, so I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Now, um, I'm gonna add my baking powder straight into that bowl. So, I got baking powder. So, uh, now. So you can check out the channel of the remix recipe as well. So thank you for commenting. Now this is uh, my uh, baking powder. So I'll pop that in. One quarter tablespoon of baking powder. You don't you don't want to put too much baking powder. If you do that, it's it's gonna like uh, you know open up the uh, meat pie. It's gonna be too much. Don't use your baking soda. Use baking powder. I prefer baking powder for meat pie. For me, five dough, five dough. So I'll set that aside. I don't need that. I'll set that aside. Now, my friends, uh, I'm gonna mix that. I'll mix everything. Uh, I don't need my nutmeg. I'll set that aside. I'll put that away. I don't need my salt. I'll put my salt away. I'll put that away. So um, I said in my country they add uh, like stock cubes. You can add that, but I don't want to put that. So I'll be using my nutmeg only, well spice with salt. Now uh, I got my unsalted butter. You need a good quality butter. So I'm going to pop that in into my pastry. 
And of course, my friends, you know the techniques I normally do, my method. My hands are clean and I always like to, you know, use my two palms to make, to, to blend my lovely butter with the flour, like the rubbing in metal, you know what I mean? Like, you, you scrub it with your two palms. So, you want it smooth to blend with your flour. You could use your, uh, your mixer to do that if you want to, your stand mixer. But I'll be using this to make it. So now, I'll keep doing that until it's very smooth. It's almost smooth. And you see my friend, it's almost smooth my friends. Now my friends, uh, I got a smooth uh, mixture, I'm gonna wash my hands. So my friends, you can see my lovely bowl. I got you, you can see right in the bowl uh, a smooth. Uh, can you see that, my friends? Nice and smooth. Now I'll make it well at the middle. I need half egg. But I'm still gonna be using my egg, some eggs for glazing and whatever. So now, uh, I'm gonna wix that. Let me grab my wigs. I'll grab up my friends. So my friends, I'm gonna wig that. <laughs> I'll put that aside. I'll put this away. I don't need my uh, scale anymore. I'll put that away. I don't need my pepper, I don't need my turmeric, I'll put that away. I don't need my ginger, I'll put that away. I don't need my spoon, I'll put that away. Now, I could still use my wigs, I can set them aside. So, um, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla flavor, or you say one quarter tablespoon is the same thing. So, 
that's already gone. I'll put that. I'll pin that. Now, uh, I'm gonna be adding just a half egg or one quarter egg, not too much, just a little bit of egg, like you know, one quarter from one egg. You know, that should be enough, my friends. Now I'm gonna grab my cold water. So I'll be right back, my friend. Just a second, please. Thank you. So my friends, I'll be adding a little bit of water, like uh, uh, I need them uh, like uh, uh, maybe three tablespoons of cold water. You don't want to put too much, because you put too much, you're gonna ruin it. So I keep stirring with my spatula. Can you see that, my friends? You don't want to add too much water. Keep stirring with this, with this spatula. Now I'm gonna use my hands to finish it up. Because if you don't use the hand, you're not gonna know if it's all right. So I just need a little bit of water. Just a little bit of egg. Yeah, that's enough. Now, I'll keep mixing that now. You bring it together. You don't want your dough to be uh, too hard or too soft. But you want a nice consistency. Nice and soft. And not sticky, my friends. You want your dough nice and soft and not sticky. So put your water in bits, be careful. Don't put too much water. If not, you're gonna ruin it. Almost getting something nice, nice and soft. Now I'm gonna show you something now. So I got a nice uh, soft dough, so I'm going to bind it together, can you see that my friends, I bring it together like a ball so that, so that, uh, can you see, lines in it, lovely dough, nice and soft. I love to play with the dough in the kitchen. <laughs> like a boy, isn't it? No cracks. So I'll pop that in a clean thing. 
and put back in the freezer or fridge to chill for some seconds or so for, for a couple of minutes then I'll start to roll it's very easy to make fish fry it's not really difficult if you follow my recipe sure and you follow my method that's gonna be easy to make so I'm gonna wash my hands now and continue with the uh, with the fish fry so I just need to clean my work surface I need to make that clean I don't need this anymore so I'll put it away I don't need that anymore put that away Now, uh, I'm going to grab my clean fin and I'm going to chill my um, dough for a couple of minutes in the freezer, maybe about 3 minutes in the freezer or I can chill it in the fridge for like 10 minutes or something. So I'll be chilling that in the freezer for a couple of minutes. All right, my friends, now, uh, I don't need this. I'm going to put that away. don't need that anymore. So my friends, I'm going to pop in one more egg right in here because I'm going to be using that for glazing and for sealing up the edges. So I'm going to mix that. So uh, I'm going to put that away now I don't need my olive oil I'll put it away I'll put back my egg in the fridge so I'll be getting the pastry brush Let me check my. I don't know if I have a fish for sure. Somewhere else. Okay. Uh, okay, I got one here. So I'll pop that. That's my egg, my egg wash. I'll set that aside. I need, I need my egg wash. That's how you prepare when you want to make your pastry. I need a rolling pin, so I'm gonna grab my rolling pin. I need a meat pie quarter or a fish pie quarter. But I'm going to be showing you how to make it without the quarter as well. So I will need a fork for that. 
when I'm making it without a quarter. So I'm gonna grab some sizes of meat by quarter or fish by quarter. I'll be using this one, using that one as well. Now I got I got that one like a triangle. I got that one like this. So I'm gonna be making different shape of fish pie. I'm gonna be making a round shape, I'm gonna make it a square, I'm gonna make it a you know different shapes I'm gonna show you. Nice shape my friends. So now uh Um, I'm gonna be uh, showing you how to uh, do the fish pie. So I'm gonna transfer my uh, my uh, fillings right into the plate. That's my fillings. You can see my feelings, you know, binds together. So, um, that's my feelings. So, I'll pop that one right in there. You can see it sticks together, binds together. So now I'm gonna get started right away. Put that on the way I don't need that. So my friends, I'm ready to make my wonderful fish pie. So my friends, now I'll be showing you how to make the fish pie. So uh, I'm going to give a recap again. And if you have your jot and your pen, you write down what I'm doing, you know, or how I get go to this process. So just a quick one, yeah. So and, and I'm gonna explain everything from start to finish before rolling and placing on the um, on the um, on the oven tray and taking my um, fish pie straight into the oven. So it's just a simple procedure. So uh, get a jot on your pen if you have one. So I'll be explaining the recipes and method and now I got to this very point. Uh, and I'm gonna you know introduce myself again. My name is Francis and uh, welcome to Cooking Chef Francis. And I upload uh, videos every day. You know, I'm I, I do live stream now because my viewers want me to do live stream because I'm, I explain very well and they get the expertise when you watch it live. But when you, when you watch an uploaded video, it could be fast forwarded and you could miss the very important point. But here, you get every point that you need right on this live stream. So I'm making it for real. My recipes are real. I don't change my recipes. They are for real and my viewers, they follow it and they practice at home. They try it and they get it right. So I've got lots of feedback. You know, impressive feedback from the viewers, and that's absolutely great. You know, I'm very happy with that. Now I'm gonna be showing you how to make it, but I'm gonna explain. You know, gonna get, give you a recap of what I did. You know. Uh, now I use uh, you know 
some recipes. I, I, I use some ingredients for the recipes, for the dough recipe and for the dough fillings. So for the dough fillings, uh, I use uh, a handful of uh, finely chopped green pepper. But you can get a handful of green pepper from one green pepper half. You know, when you cut your green pepper in half, you can get a handful of that. So a handful of finely diced green pepper, a handful of finely diced carrot, a handful of finely diced onion, and um, garlic puree, you know, from two garlic gloves. gloves. So two, two garlic gloves, I got garlic puree. The other garlic puree I use it for my fish. Now, uh, I what I did was to, you know, add olive oil on uh, onto my frying pan, and I sweated the onion. I sweat the onion in the frying pan, and with the garlic, and uh, added my vegetables. And I start mixing them, mixing them, and the next thing I did was to add my fish. But how did I prepare my fish before I added it into the frying pan? What I did was to wash my filleted hard of fish. I, I, I bought that for almost three pounds. So that's a lot of money to fillet fish. So I washed it and dry dried them with um, a J cloth. So uh, and after that drying with a J cloth, I placed them on on a tray lined with baking paper. But you could place them on your tray with uh, you know in a, in a butter tray or oil tray that's all right but i place them on a baking paper and what next did i do i sprinkle a little bit of oil salt and pepper ground turmeric ground ginger and a little bit of garlic puree from one garlic gloves uh, and i you know and i demonstrated how i made my garlic puree with my knife my cook's knife my chef knife so uh, I, I did that, mix everything up, shrink a little bit of olive oil, and I grilled that in the oven for about 15 minutes. And after that, you know, it's a skinless uh, sea bass fish. So as I said earlier, you could use your sea bass, you could use your hard dog fish, you could use your sea bream, you could use your mackerel, you could use your salmon, it's up to you, whatever you want to use. But not smoked salmon, you know what I mean? Like you don't use smoke soft to make your fish bad. So you, you, you need fresh fish, and when you use fresh fish, you need to grill it yourself or you just steam it. It's up to you if you want to steam or if you want to grill. I prefer to steam to, to, to steam my macro and grill my sea bass. So what I did, I grilled my sea bass, and when it was cool, I skinned it off. You know, when you're grilling, skin down. So I skin it off and chopped them with my hands. You know, I made some shredded, uh, you know, like a shred or something, and chop them and I place them into a fish bowl, and I mix them with the um, ingredient right there, the vegetables, while on the frying pan. And I was flipping before I added my fish. But if you cannot flip, you can use your wooden spoon to to mix up. So I use both. I did both flipping and mixing with the wooden spoon. And uh, after that, I added. One tablespoon of flour and mix them all, you know, and added a little bit of water so that it binds together. But if you were steaming your fish, you were burning your fish, you could take this the, the water from the fish, the stock, you can pour it as your water instead of adding water. But because I grid my fish, I don't need to add, I don't have any stock, so I just added water because the fish is already full of flavor so everything is right in there so when i add the water the flavor everything will mix up so and i got a very nice you know you know you know uh feeling you know the feeling is to bind together so it binds together and you can see you can see that it's together that's a lovely feeling isn't it? so and got a nice color because of the turmeric right in there so that's a lovely fish feeling now i'm gonna be making my dough but how did i make my dough i'm gonna explain that now my dough i weighed my flour i weighed 250 grams of flour and i said if you are using uh, your flour your butter is always half your flour and i'm using unsalted butter i'm using the british unsalted butter so i weighed my flour 250 grams and i weighed my butter 125 grams i set them aside in that flour i added a pinch of salt 
a little bit of salt you can add uh, sea salt if you want to or table salt but I use sea salt because I love sea salt and I added it straight into my flour and I added nutmeg I added uh, one quarter tablespoon of nutmeg straight into that flour and I added one quarter tablespoon of of, uh, of baking powder you can use one teaspoon of the one quarter if you want to so I mix them up and I added my butter and I started to blend with my two pounds and I got and I, and I got a very nice fine crumbs of of, 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 of flour and flour mixture and after that I made a well at the middle added one quarter egg from one egg you divide into four and put it there and I add a little bit of water about three tablespoons of cold water chilled water right from the fridge or from the freezer or whatever so I added it and uh, <laughs> kept mixing everything and my flavor was in there about one teaspoon of flavor and I got a very nice um, consistency soft and non sticky dough which is right there in the freeze in the freezer so I'm gonna get that out and start rolling my pastry thank you very much So that's my lovely dough, my friends. It's ready. So I'll be right back, my friends. Just a second. So I want to start rolling now. Thank you. So my friends, I'm back now. So I'll start rolling my fish fry dough on my flour to work surface. So let's get started, with my friends. So I'll be, uh, I'll be, I'm um, using uh, my tray. So I'll place my fish fry on the tray. So. Uh, I need that so uh, I'm gonna place that on the uh, um, I'm gonna place my parchment paper on that one So 
but that should be that should be all right. So uh, I'll put that away. Now my friends, uh, I have my uh, tray with me lined with uh, parchment paper so uh, I'm gonna uh, start rolling my dough now. So I just need space, so I created some space. Now, I'm gonna put that one there, my flour is here, my egg wash is there, beaten eggs, my fillings, I got them, I got them here, now, this is my lovely dough. So, uh, firstly, I'm gonna I'm gonna sprinkle flour on my work surface. I'll pop some flour by the side. I'll be using that later. So, uh, the first thing to do is to flour your rolling pin. Now, I'm going to grab some, I'll put that away, I don't need them, my friend. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of that. You can see it's nice and soft, nice and round, no cracks. So, I'll place that on my board and I'm going to roll that. Can you see my friends? Let me just pop that one there. I'll just keep rolling it. As you can see that that's lovely now I'm gonna grab my uh, round cutter so I'm gonna sprinkle some flour at the edges then I'm gonna place that one right on that one then I'm gonna grab my fillings I'm gonna place like a tablespoon of fillings in heaps, one tablespoon in heaps. Next, I'm gonna grab my egg and seal the edges. Next, I'm gonna close my meat pipe. I'm still gonna use that one. I'll set it aside. Look at that. No cracks, lovely. Can you see that my friends? Lovely. I'm gonna place that on my tray. So I'll be showing you another shape. Now I'll be using this one. So I'll do the same thing I did to that one.
agamai do I'm gonna flour my rolling pin I'm gonna roll up my dough same method So my friends, I'm going to place that one on that one, same thing, feelings, so I'm going to seal the edges. Can you see that my friends? So I'm gonna do the same thing. Look at that, my friends. Very nice. So I'm gonna place that. Can you see that, my friends? Now, I'm gonna make like a cylindrical shape. more flour on my work surface so I'm gonna flour my my rolling pin again so I'm gonna roll that So I want to get like a square, so like a rectangle. Now I'm gonna grab my um, pastry cutter. So um, that's my pastry cutter. Now I'm gonna make a rectangle. So you can see my friends with the pastry cutter. Now I'm gonna pop that one. On uh, right there at the middle. Now, my friends, I'm gonna glaze it, seal up the edges with the uh, egg wash, and I'm gonna roll it. Can you see, my friends? Can you see that, my friends? I will seal the edges with egg. And I will grab my fork. Seal up the edges. So I use fork 
to see the edges. So I'm going to place that one right for that way. Yeah, I'm going to clean that. That's a mess. Now, I'm going to make another shape again, like a round shape or something. So I'm going to be making a round shape. I'll put that aside. So I'm gonna pop that one there. I want the same size, the same round shape. Now, I'm gonna add some uh, fillings right on top of that one. So I'm going to seal the edges with egg. Now I'm going to place that one on that one. Seal up the edges there. Now I'm going to be using that to seal up the edges. So my friends, I got I got another nice round lovely pie shape nice and round so I'll place that So I got two types of shapes, uh, four types of shapes. I got the semicircle one, the triangle, the round, and I got the rectangle. So I'm gonna carry on with the quarter one. So uh, I wanna.
sprinkle some water so it leaks a little bit uh, thick because when you start using flour the dough might become a little bit thick so I just want to apply some water to that just a little bit of water to make it soft again yeah that's all right now so I'm gonna make another shape you know this time around this shape I don't need I'm making a semicircle without a quarter so I'm gonna show you how to do that you make a semicircle but you don't need a quarter for that so now I'm happy I got four types of shape, so I'm making one more shape. So I'll be having a so this one I'll be making a circle. Oh that's right. So that's a circle, so I'll pop my uh, meat pie filling or fish pie filling straight on that one now I got my fish pie filling so I'll add my eggs yeah now I'll do it this way can you see that my friends? Now I'll get my fork. I'll see the edges. Can you see that my friends? So I made a semicircle with a fork without uh, the cutter. So I'll pop that one there. So you see I got lovely nice shapes. Next, I'm gonna be using my uh, cutter again. I'm gonna make two more with that, I believe so. So I'm gonna roll again. It's very lovely pie. It's nice. Nigerian style. The Caribbean also do that. Those from Jamaica and the rest. They do that. Same way. Same method. Yeah. Now I got Pop that one there. Yeah, I need to stretch, stretch it more. Yeah, that's all right. Nice and flat. Yeah. That one, that one, that one, that one. Yeah, that's all right now. So I'm going to pop uh, my. Uh, Pop it there. Um, egg wash. So, uh, same way. Can you see that, my friends? Yeah. Same way, my friends. You know, that's how the live stream is good because I keep repeating the same thing. And of course, my viewers is going to get it right when they make theirs at home. So, uh, yeah, that's all right now.
So I got, look at that my friends, lovely isn't it? So I'll pop that on the tray again. So if you check my tray again, I got two triangles, one round. Can you see that my friends? So, I should make one more or two more. So I will do it using that. I'll be making two more, my friends. Yeah. Yeah, I got my, uh, so I'll, I'll pop that one in. Yeah, same way. Yeah, that's the, uh, so I'll, uh, yeah, that's all right. Now, same thing i'll quickly do that again <laughs> yeah Look at that, my friends. Nice, lovely, isn't it? So I pop down the. Uh... So my friends, I'm gonna sprinkle flour on the. Uh... I'll take them out. I'm gonna sprinkle flour on the um, line baking parchment paper. On the parchment paper. I'm picking flour there on the parchment paper. I don't want my pie to stick, so uh, I'll just add flour there, so it doesn't stick on the... Uh, it's not going to stick, but I don't want it to sweat. It's going to sweat, so just a little bit. Now, I'm going to pop that one there. Right at the edges. That one there. That one there. That one there. It's not gonna stick now. That one there. It's circle there. That one there. You need to give them some space. You space them. Now, I'm going to make a baby one there. So, uh, that's the baby one. So, I'm going to roll it out. So, this is just a baby one. So, I don't want to throw it away. You could give out to a, a, a little baby. Just a little, for, you know, a kid can take that. So I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to pop that one in. That 
Pass the light. Very nice. I'm, I'm gonna try it. Very nice. Yummy. So I'm gonna glaze it with with egg again, egg wash. Now, this is the baby one. I'll use my fork. Okay, so you can give kids that one, like a baby. Uh, maybe two years old, three years old, or whatever. Little baby, three, four, five years. Five years to take that. Five years old. Can you see that, my friends? I got, I got the semicircle, two semicircle shapes. I made it with a cutter, and I made that one with my hand. I got two squares. I got one rectangle. And I got one round one, and I got I got the uh, small one, the baby one. So now I'm gonna wash my hand, preheat my oven, and start baking my fish pie. But I said earlier on, uh, in Europe and America, what they do, they put their fillings here and they cover with a pastry. You roll out the pastry and they put it on top, and that's done. You seal it very well, and they use fork. To eat it. So different ways of making pie, but this is the African style and the Jamaica and the Caribbeans. So the Caribbeans and the Africans do it that way. So I'm washing my hands now. And uh, I'm gonna create my oven. I'll turn on my oven, I'll preheat pre my oven for at least 5 minutes and set it at 190, 180 to 190, not more than 200. So I'll be doing that now. Uh, my oven is on now. So I'll set it at I'll, uh, I think 30 minutes, so my meat pie should be ready in 20 minutes. So, uh, 190, 180, no, not more than 200 degrees Celsius. That's on gas. That's fine. Yeah. Now, I'll put this away because I'm not yet done with that one. While my oven is preheating, I'll glaze my uh, fish pie with egg wash. So, I'll put that away. I'll put those away. I don't need that one. I'll put this away. I don't need it. I don't need this anymore. I don't need that anymore. Pay for pot wash. Now, I'm gonna clean my uh, work surface. You know, when you make mess, we need to clean. So I'm going to clean that now. I want it very neat. So uh, I'm managing my time. So uh, I need to make it very clean. Yeah, I'll keep doing that quickly while my oven is still on. You can sanitize your uh, workstop or work surface if you want to. 
our work top needs to be very clean our work surface needs to be very clean so I always make it nice and clean all the time nice and clean you know like a new work surface if I don't make it clean it's gonna be dirty isn't it and when it's dirty our food is gonna look horrible but if our work surface is very neat, it means our food is going to come out clean and it's going to be very nice, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to be very, you know, absolutely gorgeous and <laughs> sensational. So uh, now it's, you know, like a new one now, very clean, isn't it? Very clean. You know what I mean? Like, it's like it's newly bought. So now I'm going to finish up with my cleaning yeah yeah everything is clean now so um i'm gonna wash my hands now So my friends, let's finish up. Now I have my uh, egg wash. So uh, basically I'll be glazing the top with egg wash. I want it to shine very well. Can you see egg wash? I want it to shine very well, so I'm glazing with egg wash. I got the round one, I got the triangles, I got the baby ones, I got the um, I got the um, the semicircle one, I got the round one, I got this square one, the rectangle ones. So now I'll glaze with egg wash. I'm using my pastry brush to glaze my fish pie with egg wash it looks absolutely gorgeous absolutely nice it looks sensational isn't it you know this is absolutely sensational i love it it looks it looks great it's gonna come out fine i'm gonna put it straight in the oven now and uh give it a couple of minutes to get ready it's not gonna take about in less than 20 minutes, fish pie is ready. So, uh, I'm still gonna glaze it again when it's almost cooked because we want it to shine, shine very well. So, you know, when you, when you buy a new car, you know what I mean? Like, your new car is shining, like, you know. So, it's same thing, like, or when you polish your shoes, you know, like you polish it, you want it to shine. So, that's what we're doing here. So, that's all right now so um, I'm gonna take this closer to the camera for you to see you can see that one is a round one that's the three semicircle that's the two triangles that one is a rectangle so I got I got different shapes there's the baby one semicircle baby one for kids maybe five years six years so I'm gonna pull this I'm gonna pop that straight into the oven and bake for at least 20 minutes maybe 15 to 20 minutes or 20 minutes or 22 or whatever so i'll put on my timer i'll set my i preheat my oven uh, for five minutes and at 200 degrees celsius 190 to 200 or from 180 to 200 that's all right so straight into the oven now So that's alright my friends now. So uh, uh, I'll grab my timer. I got my timer here. So I'm gonna put I already put the timer, the oven timer, but I'll still be using that one. So I'll set it at uh, 16 minutes. So in 16 minutes, 
I'm going to check what's going on, you know, what's going on in the oven and I'll take out my, I'll remove my fish pie and I'll glaze it again with the remaining egg wash because I want it to shine, you know, like when you buy, when you buy a new car, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you, you buy a new shoe or something and you polish the shoe, you know, it's like it's shining, like looking glossy. So that's what we're doing to our fish pie. We want it to shine, so that's why I'm glazing with egg wash. Don't use any that thing to glaze, you know. You know, back there in my country and someone was glazing a meat pie with milk and there was an argument in the in the school. I wanna use milk to I wanna use milk to glaze my meat pie. You know, and and then and the student was told it's only egg wash and like the student want to make an experiment you know let me try milk and see what's going on and when the student used milk you know what happened you know <laughs> behold you know what happened like the uh, the meat pie became very hard so you don't want that in your fish pie or your meat pie so when you use your egg your egg keeps it nice and soft when your milk makes it hard and we don't want that so we only use and you don't want to use olive oil or oil of course you're going to ruin it because your fish pie is going to be too oily and who knows what's going to happen to it it could start you know you know changing the texture and all that and it could break or something start breaking because when you have too much of olive oil or butter in your flour for your meat pie is going to ruin it that's why i gave you my standard recipe for meat pie it's like a secret recipe most people who does uh you know meat pie teaching people how to make pie meat pie or fish pie they don't really tell you the real uh, measurement or you know the actual quantity to use especially the butter because you know i don't know why they do that but is 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 very is technical so that's why i say it's better for you to have more flour and and, and, and than have more butter but of course if you if you don't use the same recipe and you use too much flour again your meat pie is going to be too hard so the secret behind it now what you need to do is when you have your flour with you make sure your flour is twice the amount of your butter you know what I mean if your flour is 500 grams then your butter should be from 200 to 250 but do not exceed 250 if you use 200 that's all right if you use 210 that's all right if you use 250 but do not go beyond 200 and do not go above 250 if you go beyond 200 it's gonna be too hard and if you go above 250 then your pie is gonna break apart and when it breaks you're not gonna like it you know you want a perfect shape you want something nice and glossy with a nice texture with a nice look you know you know something very nice and looks you know amazing you know looks gorgeous so we need to take care of the pie we don't want to ruin it so that's what makes a good pie in the outer covering like you know you you, you, you know it looks absolutely nice so you want it nice you know so that's why we we are careful with the amount of butter and the amount of flour we are going to use for our mixture. So my name is Francis and this is Google Chef Francis live on YouTube, making it way on YouTube, making live streams every day. My viewers said that we're doing live stream because it makes it easier for them to understand than making an upload, you know, making editing and all that. Because there could be fast forwarding 
when I fa when I if I fast forward, it's, oh, how do you do that? It's that like asking question, you know. You know what I mean? Like you want to make a short video of five minutes or ten minutes. But I'm making a long one, and this is a life cooking class, life cooking um, channel, life cooking videos. It's like a food vlog as well. So I'm explaining everything from start to finish. So this is a very nice cooking class, a light, nice cooking channel. So here I, 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 I give you the recipe, I don't lie, the real recipe, you know, the standard recipe in culinary. No lie here, no fast forward. I don't send you to a website or to a blog or somewhere to check the recipe. I give you right here on, on my channel. If you check my other uploads, you see my recipes are right there on the video. When you open my channel, you see the introduction, you know, and you see um, the recipes right there. And while I'm cooking, you can see the explanation as well, written on the screen. Weigh your flour, mix your flour, mix your ingredient or whatever. You see step by step, and you're gonna get it, isn't it? So on in this one as well, I explain several times, you know. From the very beginning, midpoint, at the end as well. Most times you see me explaining, repeating the recipes because when you're making a live stream, some viewers could come in at any time and they could leave. So when they come, even if they stay for five minutes, 10 minutes, it doesn't really matter. They still get something, you know. They could be at work, they could be busy with family and friends or whatever, so they might not have time to join the live stream. So the little time they have to join the live stream, they understand what I'm doing. And as well, they, they could watch the replay. I got so many live streams. If you check my uh, my, my my page, you will see my my playlist. I got playlists on live stream. I got playlists on dessert. I got playlists on uh, cocktail drinks, cakes, and all that, sweet pastry. So if you check my live stream, if you miss any of my live stream, you can click on it. I made, this is my 14th live stream now. The first live stream I made, uh, cookies, second live stream. I made shortbread. I made shortbread with whole wheat flour and I made shortbread with a normal white flour. And the third live stream, I made scones. You know, it's called scones in English, uh, in Britain, and it's called, it's called scones in, Brit in Britain, and it's called scones in American English. So I made scones, and the next one I made the Genoa, number four, Genoa or chocolate, you know, is, is from the city of Genoa, G-N-O-A, and that's an Italian sponge cake. It was spongy, I demonstrated to my friends, I, I, I brought a new sponge, and I pressed it, and I compared it with the one I made, the same thing, so it's spongy. You know, the fifth one I went ahead to make uh, focaccia bread, I made ciabatta, ciabatta bread. I made blueberry uh, and muffins and banana muffins. You know, I also made pizza. So I've made so many live streams, you know. And today, yesterday, I made a milky bread and it came out very nice and soft. Softest ever milky bread. Nice and soft. And today, I'm gonna be making uh, I already started making meat pie and uh, fish pie rather it's same thing like meat pie it depends on the feelings that you use if you use fish it's called fish pie if you use beef it's called beef pie if you use chicken it's called chicken pie if you use pork it's called pork pie it's just use whatever meat or fish you want to use and follow the same feelings you know I'm using my feelings I already told you so I'll say that again I'll go back and you know, like a recap and tell you everything and how I got to this point. While we're waiting for, I guess, I, I got uh, about five to six minutes more to glaze my uh, milk pie. It's almost ready. So I'm gonna explain everything again from start to finish, how I made my wonderful fish pie. Firstly, I, I'm gonna tell you the, the recipes again. Let me just quickly look through the glass of my oven and see if my meat pie, my fish pie is ready. Yeah. I really love what's going on now. It looks absolutely gorgeous. You know, I, I don't want to carry my camera and show you the oven, you know. I don't want to do that now. 
But you know, I, I I moved my camera when I was doing the filling, so I don't want to move it to the oven. But re just be rest assured, everything is fine. And I'm gonna show you in the next five minutes. I'm gonna glaze it again. I'm gonna see, and I'll put it back in the oven again. And we're, we're gonna show you how the meat pie came out. Now I'll quickly explain the recipes before I bring it out and glaze it. So now the recipes I use for this wonderful fish pie. It's lovely. They love this fish pie in Africa. In Nigeria, it's widely eaten in many uh, pubs and many stores. They sell it, you know, they sell it in uh, many fast food joints. You know, they sell them there and kids love it. Everyone loves it. It's absolutely healthy. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you what I did. In the Caribbean, they also make it. So now I'm going to tell you what I did. Number one, the recipes, I use these recipes for the fish pie. I use flour, 250 grams of flour. This is absolutely nice. This recipe is nice for a family of five. This recipe is for a family of five. That's all right. Partners and kids, that's enough for them. Family of five, nice recipe. Number one, I use flour, 250 grams of plain white flour two i added 125 grams of unsalted butter i am using british unsalted butter because i don't want to use margarine butter is very nice because it it has flavor you know it's milky it's made from milk so it has flavor to your food and it's healthy it's more healthier than margarine. You know, margarine contains some chemicals. ED, whatever, what they put in it, I don't, I don't care. But unsalted butter is natural from the cow. The one I bought is made from British milk. Really natural. I don't use margarine anymore. I used to use that before, but I don't care. But I stay with my unsalted butter. It's really nice. You could use a margarine for industrial production, but if you're at home, you can use your unsalted butter. It's very nice. But when you're making large quantity, you know what I mean. You know, you can use your uh, margarine. Now, I weigh my flour, 250 grams, set it aside. You know, uh, added my flour in a bowl and added a pinch of salt and i said again i am making healthy meal so I, I use sea salt a pinch of sea salt well you could use your table salt if you want to but i love using sea salt i, I use sea salt i use rock salt they are healthy i am i used to make healthy meals flour is healthy as well it doesn't really matter if it's white or brown but the brown one is more healthier than the white one but flour is good for the body so i added a pinch of salt into the flour <coughs> I beg your pardon. And I added nutmeg, one quarter tablespoon. It's equivalent to one teaspoon. If you use one teaspoon or quarter tablespoon, that's all right. Straight in there. And I added baking powder. I can perceive the aroma. I'll, I'll bring it out as soon as possible. And I added uh, uh, nutmeg, half, one quarter tablespoon. That's one teaspoon. And I added uh, baking powder, one quarter tablespoon, which is like <coughs> one teaspoon as well. <coughs> Then I mix everything together, added my butter, and I blended with my hands. When it was finely, you know, blended, I made it well at the middle. Added uh, one quarter egg, you know, one egg. You divide into four. I mix it, divide into four, you know, straight in there. And I added cold water, about three tablespoons of cold water, right from the freezer, from the fridge, very cold. Put it there. And I added vanilla extract, one teaspoon, and I mix it up with my spatula, and I use my hand to to knead it, and I got a very nice and soft ball of dough. And you saw me playing with the dough, very nice and soft. So I brought it close to the camera, and it looks absolutely nice and soft. If you use a very hard dough, you're going to win it. When you roll, it's not going to stretch, it's not going to extend, so you're not going to be wide. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be sticky, or it's going to be hard. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna stay together. So you need to make it nice and soft and non-sticky. 
So what I did, I the nice and soft round ball of dough, I use the cling film, you know, I wrap it with the cling film and I place it straight into the fridge. You can put it in your freezer for like five minutes or in the fridge for like at least 10 minutes. So I brought it out and I set it aside. So I'm gonna check my meat pie and finish up what I'm saying. I'm done with the dough, I'll talk about the feelings now. So let me check what's going on in my meat pie. So I'm gonna bring my meat pie out and grill the second time quickly because you know the baking powder is still working in the meat pie. I don't want my meat pie to fall, so I'm gonna glaze it now with uh, egg wash quickly. So I show you what's going on now. You see my meat pie is ready, so I'm gonna quickly glaze it again with egg wash. I'll be very quick at this time. I'm not gonna waste time. I'll be very quick. I'll glaze it quickly. I hope you can see my friends. It looks absolutely nice. You see my, my time is dipping. Look at the round one, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Lovely round meat pie. Fish fire, baby powder. So now uh, I'm gonna quickly do that. You know when you're working in a restaurant, you need to be very quick. Well you got like 1000 customers waiting. You know. And as chef, we stand all day, all day in the kitchen. We stand for like 10 hours in the kitchen. You don't sit down in the kitchen. But in my house, I got my time to sit down. When I'm in the, in the, in the restaurant, I don't sit down in the kitchen. I stand for longer hours. You only sit down during your break time if you want to. I'm even used to standing. I don't even like to sit down. During my break time, I just still stand up or something. So. Standing is good. So now I'm going to pop that straight into the uh, back into the oven. So while it's in the oven, I'm going to turn off my oven because my meat pie is already nice and golden. So I'm going to turn it off. So it means 15 minutes is all right for your meat pie at 180 to 200 degrees Celsius. 15 to 16 minutes is all right. I placed it for 16 minutes and it was all right. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn on my oven and allow the remaining heat in the oven to like make it nice and crispy again because it's already ready now, I can see that. It looks nice and golden on top. So I'm gonna turn my oven off, finish up my explanation and tell you what I did. I'll put that away, I don't need that. So I'm gonna tell you what I did now, uh, turn that off, turn that off, turn that off. Now, my friends, my meat pie, my fish pie is ready. So I'll finish up the explanation, bring that wonderful fish pie right from the oven. I'll remove it from the oven and show you the inside, show you the texture of the meat pie show you everything and of course you know this is absolutely nice uh, uh, uh fish pie so my friends i'm gonna tell you what i did now now um for the feelings you know i said the dough i wrap in cling film and i pop it in the fridge you can pop that in the freezer if you want to and i left that for about 10 minutes then my feelings, what did I do with my feelings? I, you know, I, I, I took one onion, peel the onion, wash it, finely dice it. I place that on a plate and next thing, I took my uh, bell pepper, I used the green one, half of it, I removed the seed and I finely diced it. I set that aside on same plate, chop onion on that same plate, dice uh, green pepper on that same plate. Then next, I brought three medium, uh, three baby carrots, three. You could use two medium size or one big one, one large, one large, two medium or three baby ones, all right. So I got three baby ones, I peel them, 
with my pillar and wash and made a jul julian. You know, I made a julian. A julian is like a long strip. Then after making a julian, I made what a fine dice, and I placed my fine dice right on the um, on the plate. And before that, I made a garlic puree as well. I, I made from three garlic gloves. Gloves. I made a, 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 a garlic puree, and uh, I chopped them and you know finish up with my knife. And I made a puree. I I, I used two of those from you know it's three garlic uh, gloves. Gloves. And I, I what I what I do, I um, took about the, uh, you know the two portions from that right into the uh, the um, the diced vegetable and I set that aside and what next did I do I took my frying pan and before that I already grilled my fish you know I said you could use uh, you know it's fish pie so you could use your macro if I'm using macro I always like to steam my macro I have to remove the bones after steaming or you could use a uh, hard dog you could use sea bass, sea brain, but or, or or salmon, but not the smoked one. You use, you use salmon and you roast it yourself or you cook it. So what I did, that's the fresh salmon, isn't it? So what I did, I used sea bass. Sea bass it seemed like a sea brain. So I use sea bass, and what I do, I wash my sea bass, I dry them with a J cloth, and after drying my sea my, my sea bass with a J cloth. I place them skin down, you know, when you're frying fish in the kitchen as a chef, it's skin down. You don't put it that way. Just the skin of the fish needs to be down on the grill or under the salamander or on the hob or whatever. Skin down. So what I did, I brought a tray and I, you could oil your tray or butter your tray if you want to. You could use the butter tray or an oil tray. But I use a tray lined with baking paper. I put my two fish and my fish fillet skin down, sprinkle with salt and black pepper, a little bit of ground uh, ginger, and a little bit of uh, ground turmeric. Sprinkle with olive oil on both sides and put it back to be skinned down and place it straight into the oven. And I, I, I grilled that lovely fish for 15 minutes and when it was ready I took it out of the oven allowed to cool down set it aside then when it cooled when it cooled down what I did was to you know it's already filleted and no no bones in them there's no bones in the fish so what I did was to shred the fish I shredded the fish cut them in pieces and I placed them in the separate fish bowl and while I was sweating my onion in olive oil right in the frying pan, you know, I brought my camera close for my viewers to see. So what I did was to add a little bit of olive oil on my frying pan and I sweated my chopped onion on that frying pan. And then my garlic and the rest of the vegetable. And I kept stirring that I was flipping as well. But I said, if you cannot flip, you can use your wood, wooden spoon to turn it. Of course, I'm using my, my expensive... Uh, Frying pan. That frying pan is very expensive. I cannot use a wooden, a, 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 a steel spoon. I need to use a wooden spoon so I don't spoil the surface. It's really expensive. I got that for about uh, forty pounds, forty quid. That's a lot of money, isn't it? So I uh, uh, added the olive oil, added the chopped uh, onion, and uh, you know all the vegetables. When I started to flip, and I added my fish, and mix everything up together, and when you're making fillings for fish pie, you don't want to put a fish a filling that is falling apart. You want the filling to come together, isn't it? So what did I do? I added some water right into that mixture and I added flour, one tablespoon in heaps, right into that mixture. But hey, my friends, if you don't want to add water, if you were steaming your fish or burning your fish, for example, you are using macro and you are burning the macro, you could add the stock from the macro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you, when you steam, when you steam macro, you know, your macro comes out with a nice stock right in there. You know, you added your, 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 your spices, your favorite spices. 
you know, this is my own spice. If you use your own favorite spice, it doesn't really matter. What spice, whatever spice you, you like, add into your fish and use your fish pie. It, I, I'm not saying you should use my spice. We are all chefs or, or, or different kind of cook. So we have our own style of spicing dishes. You could learn from other people, but you could have your own style and you, you could even spice it better than a chef. So do your own way. Make sure your fish is very sweet. Spice it very well and put that wonderful stock. But hey, be careful, my friends. Don't make sure your stock is not salty. Because when you give someone a salty pie, you know, you, you know what I mean? If a customer, the customer is gonna reject it. You don't give someone a salty pie, a salty pie. You need you need to make sure your season, your seasoning are in the right consistency, my friends. When it comes to seasoning check, you know, you need to check for seasoning. And when you check for seasoning, it should be of the right consistency. Not too much salt in there or less salt. It should be moderate. Everything should be moderate and perfectly. It should taste perfectly fine. You know what I mean? Something that tastes very well on the taste board and you like mouth watering. You know, not salty, not salty feeling. No one wanna eat salty feeling. <laughs> so that, what I did, I added the flour and, 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 and the water because I don't have I don't have a stock. So what I did, you know, my fish have been grilled and you know the the the, the uh, it, it's already full of flavor. You know, my fish is already full of flavor. So you know, <laughs> I just put it straight in there and I mix it up with water and flour and I cooked for some time and I found out that they came together. So I got I, I got a very nice feeling. You know, is well binded and came together. And what I did was to bring out my my dough from the uh, from the uh, fridge, and I took some portion and I rolled it out. And I used my cutter. I got my round cutter. I'm gonna show you again. I used that one. You know, I rolled it out and I placed it on that one, the round one. And I put my uh, my fillings right at the middle, one tablespoon in heaps right at the middle, and I use egg wash to glaze this, to seal up the edges, and I close it up, and I got a semicircle like this. I did for two of those, and I also did the same thing for the triangle one. Then, what did I do again? I made, I made the one without a triangle, I made a square, I made a... I beg your pardon, I, wrote, I made a rectangle and, and I rolled it out in rectangular shape. Added my uh, filling, rolled it, I see the, the edges with egg wash. And I used the fork to seal it. But I don't have a cutter, so I have to use the fork. So the same thing, I made a, a semicircle with the same method and I made a circle. How did I make the circle? I cut out two circular shapes, I placed, set them aside, and I took one of the circles. And I added the filling on it and I cover it with that se the second circle. But hey, my friends, do not forget, don't forget to always seal your fish pie or your meat pie with egg wash. If not, it's, it's going to open up in the oven. So it's like your gum when you put your uh, egg wash, it's like a gum. So after that, I place them on the baking tray and Pop them on the, uh, that's ready, and I pop them on the, uh, uh, on the, on the, on the tray lined with parchment paper, and I took my egg wash, you know, and I glazed it, and put it straight in the oven for 15 minutes, then it was ready in 15 minutes, and I brought it out, and I put some egg wash again, so the total number of time, the total number of time I used for this fish pie, to, to, to bake it in the oven was 16 minutes. So I added it again in the oven, but you know my oven had been switched off. It's not on. You know that, my friends? So it wasn't on. I just put it there so that the remaining heat there in the oven would just like make it, you know, nice and crispy again. So I'm going to show you everything I did. I'm going to bring it close. My friends, that one is a round shape I made with my pastry cutter. I rolled out my dough and I cut it into round shape. Look at this, nice and lovely. I'm gonna show you the edges, it's well sealed. You can see 
it didn't open. Look at that, my friends. Look at that, my friends. Well seed. Look at the top. No cracks, my friends. There is no crack. Look at the bottom. No cracks. It's absolutely nice and hot. And my friends, please know that if you want to enjoy your pie, it must be eaten warm. Don't eat any cold pie. Meat pie, fish pie should be very warm. I can you can use your probe to check it. I can probe it, check the temperature, and um, I think so. What I'm gonna be doing now? I'll use my probe to check the temperature of the baby one. You can see, you know, it's safe to eat it at 65 degrees and you know above. So you see, my probe is moving, and uh, I can see that's absolutely nice. So I'll pull back my probe, my thermometers back into my chef white then i'm going to show you the triangle one that's the triangle one can you see that my friends sealed no opening nice lovely fish pie now i'm going to show you the semicircle one can you see my friends nice semicircle this does the egg <laughs> the egg around it you see that my friends well sealed, look at the bottom, nice, nice and golden. Then, this is the semicircle I made with my hands, my friend. You see, it's glossy, everything nice and fine. Uh, that was the baby one. Can you see? This could be given to someone who is five years old, kids or five, six years or something. That's it, my friend. So, my friends, this is the one um, of the... Um, Rectangle, can you see that my friends? Looks absolutely nice, isn't it? Now my friends, you know what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna um, grab uh, one of those. Uh, I'm gonna grab this one and break it into two and show you how it came out. Now, before that, I'm gonna Show you again everything close to the uh... you see that my friends they all look absolutely nice now I'm gonna cut that into two look at that my friends absolutely gorgeous sensational look at it my friends look at the fish pie look at the fillings and look at the steam coming out from the uh, from the pie can you see that my friends so i'm gonna try this now and end this live stream look at that my friends lovely pie absolutely gorgeous absolutely sensational it looks absolutely nice so I don't want to say anything. You know when you're eating something very hot, you don't want to say anything. And, of course, when you're eating something mouth watering, you don't want to say anything. But of course, you want to say something, isn't it? So I'm going to say, this is absolutely mouth watering, gorgeous, tasty, delicious, sweet, perfectly made, nice and golden, wonderful color, nice and sweet. Can you see that my friends? So I'm going to be ending this live stream now. So remember, if you have missed anything in this video, please watch the replay. Check out my live stream playlist. You're going to see everything there. Thank you very much, my friends. Keep watching my videos. Keep watching my playlist. And try to make this wonderful meat pie. This wonderful fish pie I made. I beg your pardon, fish pie. Try it. Make yours. And, you know, enjoy your day. If you have watched this video and you love it, please. Give it a like, leave a comment, 
and share my videos on social media and let people know that there is a channel like this that makes it for real that makes something you know entertaining something real something good you know what I mean you know that's it my friend so I remember Francis by name and this is Coco Chef Francis live on YouTube enjoy the rest of your day keep keep uh, connected to this station to this channel thank you very much one more time ciao merci bye bye